Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Prasim Industries Q4 FY21 Investor Conference Call. We have with us today from the management, Mr. Dilip Gore, Managing Director, Mr. Kalyan Ram, CEO, Global Chemicals and Group Business Head, Fertilizers and Insulators. Mr. Jayan Dua, Chief Executive Officer, Chemical Division. Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Um, good afternoon to all the participants. I hope that uh, you and your families are safe. Uh, the FI21 was a year of two halves. We started on a very grim note in quarter one with low operating rates across all our plants, uh, which was followed actually by a solid recovery from quarter three onwards. In this quarter presentation, we would like to start the discussion with highlighting the qualities of viscose as a green fiber. What makes viscose the green uh, fiber is based on three tenets, which are green product, green technology, and green ecosystem. These are highlighted on, uh, in the presentation on page four, uh, which has already been uploaded. We have listed down six powerful credentials of viscose, which makes it superior product on the sustainability front. Viscose is made from ethically 100% sourced wood and from sustainably, sustainably uh, managed forests. The land for viscose wood does not require added fertilizer or pesticides. Therefore, there's no use of chemicals for growing its raw material. Viscose needs very less amount of water as compared to other natural fibers during its life cycle, which makes it low on water consumption. Viscose is also fully biodegradable in eight weeks in comparison to that the other fibers take much longer. Additionally, pre and post consumer waste can be converted into fiber again, resulting in circularity. Brassim is one of the companies which has all the three generations of fiber under one roof, which are viscose, modal, and lyocell. Lyocell technology is a closed loop technology with an exceptional recovery rate of key chemicals such as NMMO, by more than, uh, which is recovered by more than 99.7%. Even the recovered water from the process is reused. We are uh, currently implementing a closed-loop te technology in all our viscose plants, which will lead to reduction in emissions to air and water, improve the working ambience, and also cut down on raw material consumptions. We also have unparalleled focus on adopting global standards and systems accepted and recognized globally. We have received HIC FEM 3 3.0 average scores for all our sites, and we are committed to achieve stringent EU BAT norm for all our sites by December 2022. Key to create ecological value is to use less. On page six, you'll see how we have reduced use of water, caustic, and focused on reducing emissions. Moving on to the third tenet, which is uh, a green ecosystem, it's about making an impact that goes beyond your own operations. The three pillars green ecosystem are responsible uh, sourcing and the supply chain, valuable partnerships, and uh, social responsibility. We ensure that our, we source our wood pulp requirement for certified forestry that follows responsible practices. We work with our partners in the entire value chain to impart the importance of sustainability. We have partnered with Green Track that provides end-to-end -end supply chain traceability for textile industry. We have also been making a positive impact to the society around us for many years. As a company, 
we have actively engaged with more than a million people across several states. Our CSR spends are focused on education, supporting 25,000 plus students, health, sustainability livelihood, supporting almost 14,000 plus farmers, infrastructure development and women empowerment. Our efforts towards sustainability has not gone unnoticed. Under responsible sourcing, VSF was ranked number one in Canopy's Hot Button Report 2020 with dark green shirt rating. The VSF business received the prestigious Innovation and Sustainable Supply Chain Award from United Nations Global Compact Network India in 2021. The business was given the award for its pioneering innovation relating to recycled and circular fiber made with pre-consumer fabric waste based on in-house technology. Let me now switch to the operational and financial performance of the company. The fertilizer business disinvest, uh, divestment process is expected to be completed by quarter two FY22 after receipt of NCLT approvals for the scheme of arrangements amongst other pending approvals. The reported financials has already uh, classified it as discontinued operations. Grassin Premium uh, Fabric Limited, the erstwhile Soktas India, which was a subsidiary of the company, has received the approval for merger with the appointed date of 1st April 2019. We are yet to file the final order with the ROC, but as substantial steps are already over, the financials of uh, this subsidiary has been incorporated as part of textile segment of the company. In the fourth quarter, all our businesses witnessed all round uh, improvement in operational performance on back of strong consumer sentiments due to receding COVID cases. The financial performance of BSF epoxy textiles was much ahead of expectation in this quarter. The global textile fiber demand witnessed a sharp recovery in uh, second half, led by spurt in consumer demand and restocking of the dry supply pipeline. The growing consumer preference for comfortable casual and value for clothing, uh, value for money clothing has spurred demand for cellulosic fiber and VSF has been key beneficiary of this shift. In India, VSF plants operated at full capacity for two successive quarters. The domestic demand grew by 9% YOY in quarter four. The share of value added products in the overall sales mix also improved to 26% in quarter four as against 22% in quarter three. The VSF prices in China traded at their multi-year high in China. The VSF prices rose from 12,800 RMB in Jan to 15,800 RMB in March 2021. This was driven by strong consumer demand, restocking, and rise in uh, cotton prices during the last 12 months. China's VSF inventory at plants declined significantly from 45 days in April to 13 days in March. The uh, VSF uh, business reported one of the highest EBITDA of 548 crore during quarter four. As part of VSF segment, the VFY business reported revenue of 465 crore and EBITDA of 77 crore in the quarter. The chloralkali uh, cap capacity utilization touched 94% in quarter four from 89% in quarter three. The international caustic soda prices improved sequentially, led by temporary supply disruption in the large, sorry, the later part of the quarter. In the chemical segment, the advanced material business, that is epoxy business, witnessed sales volume growth driven by demand across segments, especially wind and auto segment. The sector witnessed demand outstripping the supply due to raw material constraint coupled with disruption at certain global manufacturers leading to exceptional performance. Our consolidated revenue for quarter four rose to 24,399, up 26% YOY, 
and the EBITDA and PAT was 5,142 crore and 1,715 crore respectively, jumping 62% and 14% YOI respectively. On the standalone basis, excluding the discontinued operations of fertilizer, our revenue and EBITDA for quarter four stood at 4,394 crore and 880 crore respectively. EBITDA reported an YOI improvement of 121%. The revenue and EBITDA from the discontinued operations of fertilizer for quarter four stood at 561 crore and 33 crore and has not been included in the published financials. On CapEx, you may please refer to page 14 of the investor presentation. The total CapEx spent for FY21 stood at 1,508 crore. The CapEx plan for FY22, excluding paints and fertilizer, is rupees 2,604 crore, which includes the VSF expansion project at Vilayat, with line one scheduled to be commissioned in quarter two of FY22, and line two to be commissioned in quarter three of FI22. The other capex includes Grasson's plans to invest towards increasing its advanced material, i.e. epoxy business capacity by 125 KTPA. This would be done through a brownfield expansion at the existing location at Vilayat, uh, Gujarat. This will include standard and specialty uh, epoxy products along with curing agents. Being an industry leader, Grassin will continue to play a proactive role in, growing, uh, role in growing and supporting the demand growth of epoxy. In the chloralkali business, Grassin plans to invest in 200 TPD uh, caustic brownfield expansion at Vilayat. This would take the total capacity to 1,400 TPD at its Vilayat site and will primarily meet the customer's requirement in the country's Western region, including that the requirement of a VSF business, which, is also, which, is, which will also be commissioning its expanded capacity. The expansion will be commenced, uh, commissioned in 24 months post receipt of statutory uh, clearances and approval. The expansion of chemicals WAP uh, which is in uh, various different WAPs, will improve the ODIN integration to about 40% by FY25. This is excluding what we plan to sell to our customers through pipelines. We have uh, uh, successfully commissioned 182 megawatt of new capacity in our solar business during FY21 taking the total capacity of solar to 502 megawatt. Uh, I, I would like to remind you that the solar business is in our subsidiary, it's not a division, so it's not included in the CapEx uh, slide that uh, uh, you're seeing. It, it, it's, it's a subsidiary, so it's separately captured. In next two years, we are scheduled to add another 343 megawatt of new capacities. Our balance sheet has stayed strong despite headwinds in half one. At the end of the year, the consolidated net debt stands reduced to rupees 8,831, a 58% reduction from March 20 levels. At standalone level, the net debt reduced from 2,999 crore in March 20, which included the debt of uh, uh, erstwhile Soktas, uh, which has got merged now, to only 914 crore in March 21. Based on a performance and comfortable liquidity position, the board of directors of Rasim has recommended a dividend of rupees five per share for the year ended 31st March 2021. And in, in addition to that, a special dividend of rupees four Per, per share, taking the total dividend to rupees nine per share. The total outflow on account of the dividend would be 592 crore. 
In terms of outlook, we expect the second wave of COVID to impact the uh, uh, operational and financial performance uh, during the lockdown due to the demand slowdown. But we expect the recovery to happen as smart as last year uh, after the lockdown is over. With our inherent financial strength, operational excellence, and diverse product portfolio of cement, financial services, viscose, and chemicals, we've always demonstrated the ability to be resilient and rebound quickly. So now I would like to hand it back to the operator for Q&A. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Priyant Mahajan from Kota. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, this is Mangal uh, Nevitya from Kota. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, first question is with respect to the VSS business, uh, a very strong recovery, but uh, starting April, we are seeing some softness in prices and also cost is expected to catch up as far as pulp is concerned. So is it possible to share some color both on prices and cost uh, uh, in 1Q21? Uh, how is it moving? And also, I mean, what is the recent volume trends uh, given the recent uh, uh, lockdown and restrictions in the country? Thanks. Yeah, they're appearing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they left you there. Yeah. Now, uh, I couldn't share this question properly. Uh, it is about Q4. Uh, no. So, they left, uh, uh, the question is regarding uh, the second wave of COVID, how it has impacted price, uh, volume, uh, both price and volume. Yes. Uh, and something about pulp you wanted to know, right? And yeah, and the pulp price because the cost is going up. Yes, sorry. I, if, you, if you look at the at the, uh, the quarter four, and uh, as we were exiting the quarter four, the demand was very strong. I think India witnessed the highest ever consumption of this course per day in the, in, the, in the March quarter. And until the lockdown was imposed, the, the going was pretty strong in the, in the, in the Indian market. The, the the prices also global prices uh, have been at the peak in the, in the quarter four, but those prices were exceptionally high because of there was an underlying demand, but there was a lot of restocking happening. So we expected some rebalancing of the prices to happen. So, so to that extent, yes, there was some moderation in the prices, but still the VSS prices remained quite uh, quite less attractive as the quarter ended. Uh, with the with the lockdown, because as you know, a typical Textile uh, from fiber to garment at least moves across four to five states. So, whenever there is a lockdown, the entire value chain gets stalled. So, to that extent, yeah, there has been a demand bump, and I think that the, the domestic demand has come down significantly uh, because of the lockdown. And particularly in, in South, where, 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 where Tamil Nadu is hit very badly. And the, the, and, and, uh, the April demand uh, loss was about 25%, maybe even higher. So what we are doing, uh, but, that, but the underlying sentiment remains very strong. So when you talk to the value chain, they believe that the day lockdown is lifted, there will be a, a, a lot of sense of demand so They pick up very fast. The good news is the global market continues to remain very strong. People who are have the export businesses are doing exceedingly well. So the export businesses are go, going full circle. And I think the, 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 the U.S. economy is doing well. The U.S. retail sales have done very well. European sales are doing well. So to my mind, I think once the road bump of, of lockdown gets over, the demand will come back to its uh, healthy, healthy level. Yes, like all commodities, the pulp prices also have run up. But that's the overview. So the, the pulp has run up with a lag of VSF. Because VSF has already, if you look at the VSF prices, they've run up the 54% YOY. So, pulp is now catching up. In our case, 
the advantage is that if you recall uh, last year when the pulp prices were falling because our pricing is one quarter behind, we are always losing. But today, we will at least for two quarters we get a benefit. So our conversion cost of pulp is not going as fast as the market price is going up. So to that extent, there is an advantage our business has. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, Philip, that covers it well. I I think one more point. The what 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 has happened is that of course the spread of uh, VSF over pulp has uh, uh, gone up significantly, uh, and it is um, uh, gone beyond even FI19 levels, which will uh, normalize with the pulp prices also catching up. Okay. Okay. So can I? Uh, uh, is it fair to conclude that fourth quarter we've uh, uh, hit the peak in terms of profitability, so in terms of margin, given the benefit of lead in uh, VSF prices versus pulp? Is that a fair assessment? I couldn't hear. Can you repeat your question no. once again? The line is a little bad here. Yeah. yeah. No. I think Dilip, what uh, Sumangal is asking is that. Is it fair to conclude that quarter four was the peak for uh, Viscos? Yes, obviously, because you see, it was uh, it was not only the demand growth, there was restocking happening. So it was a peak of the it was a multi-year peak. Yes, I agree. Understood, understood. Uh, second question is uh, with respect to the capex. Uh, so Ashish, uh, uh, last year fourth quarter uh, outstanding capex was somewhere around five thousand crores. This year we spent 1500 and a plan is another 2500 uh, odd uh, in FI22. So, from our design uh, capex, uh, around 1000 odd crores is still pending, which would be spent in the following year. Is that a right understanding of yeah. our capex plan? No, no. Uh, so, uh, Sumangal, I don't think you should read it uh, that way. I think earlier we used to give the sanctioned amount, right, which was. Uh, 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 more of an outstanding capex, and then we used to show year-wise breakup. Okay, I think to give better guidance to the market because uh, you know it was very difficult to give outlook of two years down the line what the capex would be. To give a better outlook, now we are giving one-year outlook of capex, uh, which is uh, you know other than. For paints, it is uh, and as fertilizer, it is 2600 crores. So that's how you should be reading the chart. Don't uh, uh, calculate the balance amount uh, and assume that that would be the future amount. Okay, but uh, I mean, in terms of all our ongoing uh, projects, uh, will we be, I mean, com uh, completing all the expenditures uh, towards those in this year itself? Yes, or there will be some leftover. No, so uh, VSF uh, 600 TPD, what I talked about, the two lines in Vilayat will complete in quarter two, quarter three. The uh, uh, chloralkali capacity expansion, which is uh, go ongoing in Vilayat, uh, the current ongoing in Vilayat and Rehla, uh, these two, and Balbadrapuram, there has been some delay in these capacities to come uh, because of the COVID. Okay, so the local situation in, for example, Bal Badrupurum is not good. So therefore, we are having to uh, push out the uh, uh, capex commissioning. So there is some delay out there. Uh, in terms of Vilayat, new 200 TPT, we are giving a guidance of 24 months uh, after uh, receiving the statutory approvals. Uh, yeah, so the, these are the broad uh, timelines of the uh, uh, current plan that I talked about. Uh, Jayant, is there anything that you would like to add in that? Please feel free. The, the only thing I would add over here, Sumangal, is like our chloromethane that will come up in Vilayat again, you know, early H2. So, Rehla will come in early H2, BB Puram K1 will come in early H2. Uh, and uh, as uh, the 200 fresh expansion, that will take another 24 months. So we have a fairly large set of projects which are going to be coming up in the pure alkali business this year, uh, starting H2 early till the end of the year getting commissioned. Understood, understood. Uh, thanks for these details. Just one small clarification. Uh, so the CapEx slide uh, mentions X of paint. 
So, uh, does it mean that this year there will not be any start of capex in the paint business, or we are still very early to share details on that business? Yeah, it, it's the latter. So there will be capex uh, on in paint business, but you know, as you know, that it, it's only about uh, three four months back that we we discussed about and and uh, entering into paint business. So we are still formulating our strategy and capex plan. as we going along we're looking at uh, uh, land uh, uh, acquisition etc for the locations of our plant so right now it's too early to say what the capex guidance for the year would be so therefore we are just uh, maintaining the earlier guidance that was given right now which is 5000 crore over 3 uh, years of capex and as we get more clarity we will feed that uh, to our investors got it thank you so much and uh, all the best thank you so much. thank you the next question is from the line of hirav jamoria from anvil research please go ahead good afternoon sir uh, sir my so i have two questions so one is on vss and then on chemicals so first on uh, vss sir vss prices like uh, in the presentation you have shown that uh, it has moved up from uh, the gray vss prices have moved from almost 1.2 dollars a kilo to almost now 2 to 2.2 2, 2. dollars a kilo so how does the premium moves for the value added or the specialty vss because i if i recall it correctly in q2 conference call you have mentioned that premium for modal xl is generally a 1 dollar premium to the gray vss prices so Let's say if gray VSF prices were 1.2 dollars in Q2 and now at 2 dollars, so how does the premium moves uh, for the special day? Because what I find uh, from the numbers is I think uh, the value-added premiums have slightly shrinked as compared to what we were earlier doing. So let's say in H1 FY21. So if you can. you have some sort of explanation here and a related question for specialty vsf is that how how is the market for specialty vsf in india so uh, how it is growing over the years and if, if you can explain our market share in terms of uh, the growth what we have seen in the specialty vsf market in india so this is about vsf sir good good question so i'll respond to first to your your premium part of it if you recall our earlier conversation i had i had told you that in the in the premium always goes up when the when the base vsf price is less and so your know, voice is slightly inaudible could you be slightly louder sir can can you hear me now yeah yeah so now it is okay so if you if you recall our two or two conversation on, on couple of occasions i have also yeah, yeah. said that the premium goes up when the base vsf price goes down because there is a band in which the premium price works okay if, if, if you take a modal price there is a 18000 to 20000 rsp is the price correct so when your when your base price goes down you see a premium going very high in terms of to a dollar plus last time Correct. So that three years back in the history, when when the prices were again two two dollars, the yeah. premium has gone down to point six dollars. So there is always a healthy premium with the band point six to one dollar. Okay. Now, when when the when the base price has gone up, the premium has 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 shrunk to that extent. Okay. The okay. point is the the uh, the other thing is the premium is a uh, the blend the premium products are a mix of there is a modal there is a There is a, a dope dye, there is an lyocell or xcel, and there is a leva eco. Different products have got different premiums. You have to look at the each category. So okay. There is no there is no flat premium across the across the board. Absolutely. The third is one product which is the lyocell or xcel product. There there has been a bit of a structural change in the market because okay. a lot of Chinese capacity has started being announced basically. They have not come on on the ground but have been announced. Okay. And we have been able to make not the quality of extra large cell which perhaps we make or or, or uh, our uh, European competition make, but that is good enough for certain applications to go in the blend. Okay. So so that had lowered the because in anticipation of the very huge capacity announcement. Yeah. There was a temporary dip in the price of large cell in Chinese market. Okay. Okay. But one of the one of the competition announced that I will I will sell uh, uh, live sell at just the two thousand RMB premium to this call. Okay. Without anything on the ground. Okay. So, so more sentimental responsibility is now recovering back. 
Okay. So you this is a bit of transition on the premium part of it, right? Okay. But the fact remains that in all these things, the premium market has been very strong. Okay. Because one of the big failures even all along has been the, the, the demand for premium market. I think the modal is doing extremely well. So there is there is a huge surge in the market across the uh, okay. of the world. So part of the premium market, which is uh, which I had spoken to about, is called a uh, 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 eco, the, the eco-friendly variant of this course. Correct. The brands have been very, very enthusiastic in, in receiving this brand. So, so a lot of commodity discourse has been to an eco discourse. Okay. They will get a 15 to 20 cent premium. Now, that is a huge premium for a, but there is no difference in the fiber. Fiber is okay. okay. What you do is you make it in a, by a process which is more efficient. You make it, uh, you make it uh, with least and you give traceability. Okay. So that has been a very big change. So I think to that extent, the, the whole textile world is shifting more and more to specialty fiber. That's a good thing for the fiber business. Okay. And our, our, if you have seen our, our share of specialty is one of the 400 basis points. Yeah, correct. And the question is, you ask a good question, Indian market of specialty is moving significantly. Because we have, we have got a CAGR of more than 20%. On okay. Market. Okay. We had, taken, we had taken a very ambitious uh, of, of growing the specialty market in India, which we have far exceeded. So to our mind, I think specialty is, in India is taking off pretty well, and we have got the market leadership now. We have Correct. Got the market we Correct. Be, we see about 20-25% of the year. So I think that's what has happened. Okay. 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 So, so the second question is on uh, the chemical side. So like. Uh, if I see your uh, quarter on quarter a bit, I think it has not moved up much. So one of the uh, uh, statement in the presentation is that uh, caustic has seen some cost pressures probably. So so the cost increase is mainly because of the power cost or any other reason. So this is one. And a related question is, sir, if we see for the epoxy, what you have rightly mentioned in your opening remarks also, uh, what we have seen is that the uh, percentage increase in the prices of LER is more than probably to so all the raw materials put together, be it bisphenol or be it the epichlorohydrin. So, but when we see the profitability, I think it has not moved up much on a quarter on quarter basis. So, if you can help us understand that, is there any lag effect which would be visible in H1 of FY22? And uh, if you can give some understanding about our expansion also because I think we have announced an expansion by 125, uh, 125,000 tons for epoxy. So are we also planning some backward integration like uh, some of the players in India have announced standalone capacities for uh, epichlorohydrin. So are we also planning same sort of backward integration? Thank you. Uh, Jayant, would you like to come in for the cost uh, uh, Side of yeah. yeah. So I, I think the larger impact on a flattish kind of a situation on caustic is due to the international prices, uh, which only started seeing a little bit of an uptick in the later part of March of uh, the last quarter. Uh, while on the commodity side, I think each one of us knows that uh, the prices did go up. But I think our power management, uh, we did a good job and our activity, we were uh, quite, uh, we were not impacted too much on the power cost other than the coal increases which happened. But the results are more because of the caustic price movement rather than anything else on that particular front. I hope that answers your uh, question. Yeah, because I think ECO realizations were also higher on a quarter on quarter basis. I think what you're saying. Marginally higher compared yeah. to. Yeah. The earlier one, uh, not significantly higher. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. The last part of the quarter, there was an uptick basically due to the winter storm in US, which led Correct. to a little bit of a demand supply situation, which Correct. did move the help to move the prices up. Correct. Correct. Okay. So I, yeah. So in the cost side, basically there was some, uh, you know, uh, also repairs and maintenance, etc., of the plant, uh, uh, which was which increased the cost. Uh, a bit more than uh, quarter three in comparison to quarter three. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
on the on the epoxy fund i will i will request uh, uh, kalyan to uh, to come in uh, yeah. i i think there are a couple of questions out here uh, epoxy one is on the uh, prices increase in uh, realization uh, had increased quite a bit uh, <laughs> but but uh, uh, according to viral the margin is not reflection reflective of that is it because the cost increase yeah so um, yeah so I, i'll take that ashish yeah. please go ahead please. so so um uh, epoxy as a business has always been a an extremely steady business for us uh, we are a business where we are now more or less sold out on our uh, epoxy capacities yeah. and um, uh, what happened in the last 6 months has been uh, more with bisphenol a globally bisphenol a uh, for various reasons initially force majors and later on uh, a real severe shortage through supply chains have not been very easily accessible whereas the demand has been picking up uh, for the end products whether it is uh, just as resins or in terms of our own formulations we offer up to the formulation mm-hmm. the specialties as well as formulations So uh, when B- uh, bisphenol A became severely short, majority of epoxy players have actually not run their business uh, plants 100%. They could only run at say 90%, 85%, 95%. What we have done is um, we look at it as product, as a uh, formulation, and as a solution within the uh, raw materials that were. Um, Uh, access because uh, we had one of the better supply chains so we could get majority of our raw materials uh, which uh, we had uh, a plan for at least in in the the vilai plant and we have uh, used it for uh, gaining the uh, uh, key customers and their requirements mostly from both products as well as solutions mm-hmm. so in a way they it's hypothetical whether a bisphenol a was low price or high price it was not just available after a while so it's about getting access whereas once you get access uh, you would definitely be able to pitch it at a much higher price what we expect in the next one or two months uh, this might flip slightly we expect um, at least for the next uh, uh, month or so up to june this quarter should still be fairly um, uh, a uh, strong still the the raw materials are fully av- uh, not available when the the raw materials are fully available by second quarter the prices might soften a bit but still we expect uh, the market to be strong um, because end of the day all of the uh, downstream coatings uh, electricals auto wind all are going strong and that's also one reason for us um, uh, we are sold out and we are looking at expansion mm-hmm. and on the yeah, so, integration side sorry if you can yeah so me. so very obvious uh, if you can think of it we are the largest uh, chloralkali player we are the largest epoxy player and we are uh, highly integrated across the board and we are a chlorine derivative player so yes. it's very obvious that we should be putting the largest ech plant too um it is at an advanced uh, consideration it is being reviewed it is being finalized maybe we will have something to tell you in in a, in a period of time in a, in a uh, short period in future okay. thanks a lot for answering the queries in detail and all the very best thank you thank you the next question is from the line of chirag sureka from gst mutual fund please go ahead hi this is vivek ramakrishnan i just wanted to know about the leverage policy uh, because your net debt has come down significantly and the way i see it is even given your capex the funds from fertilizer sales and internal growth you'll be um, probably net debt uh, uh, negative or you know you'll be cash positive in the matter of a year or so uh, could you just explain where would you like to take this thanks yeah sure i think uh... see i uh, i would uh, not like to comment on it being net cash by end of the year because you know we we have certain capex plan we've not to uh, yet to uh, discussed paints capex but if you include paints capex then it's possible that 
we we will not be able to go back to the net cash position uh, but overall if you look at the policy that we follow uh, uh, you know is it, to stay triple uh, a for grasim i think it's very important that we remain investment grade both in the international as well as domestic market because that's the leverage that i have in terms of my cost of debt and my ability to therefore uh, 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 undertake projects and implement projects uh, our triple uh, a balance sheet also helps uh, our subsidiary like abcl to get a good cost of uh, uh, debt as well so it in, in, it improves the uh, uh, return for the equity holders because of their margins uh, uh, nim etc going up uh, and and therefore uh, keeping that in mind of keeping a strong investment grade uh, balance sheet we don't like to go definitely not beyond uh, three times on a net debt basis but that's on the uh, really on the outer limit where i have to get worried and start doing things like selling at non core etc to make sure you come back but i don't anticipate uh, our net debt to ebitda ratio in the next uh, you know 5 years going beyond 2 to 2 and a half times so uh, even with in, uh, implementation of our pins uh, capex thank you sir that was very useful thank you thank you the next question is from the line of pratik kumar from anti stock broking please go ahead yeah good evening thanks for the opportunity so my first question is on your capex uh, so last quarter uh, we uh, recall like uh, while the numbers were not given very precisely but uh, we were sort of thinking of spending capex of, of around 2500 crore for next two years 2223 uh, now we are saying at 2600 crores for fy22 uh, so uh, just wanted to understand what is the new capex which is around in this quarter particularly on new expansion projects on epoxy and caustic and otherwise sure so without giving the numbers like i said uh, the new capex uh, that is there uh, uh, is your bilay 200 tpd so viscose there is no new capex let me first clarify that okay in chemicals we have taken bilay 200 tpd um, and and this is going to be a incremental capex is going to be very small because this is a brownfield expansion the infrastructure utility etc is all there in bilay so there is no question of uh, a large capex out here okay then there is uh, uh, there are couple of uh, value added uh, uh, products which is uh, the chlorine derivatives which we have also included so we talked about chloromethane so like that there are few more that we have uh, budgeted for we are not disclosing right now for competitive reason of what those uh, products are but those are some of the products that is there in chemicals then i have talked about epoxy uh epoxy you know uh, while it is not a very large capex but amongst the ca capex between chemicals and others other than bsf which is pending uh that is probably one of the larger uh, capex that is there for epoxy um and other than that in vxy uh we we are cons uh, considering and right now we have budgeted for a small uh csy expansion so you have three products out there psy csy and ssy and csy and ssy are much uh better solution uh products in comparison to psy so over a period of time we want to make the vfy product mix um, more oriented to the high margin products so that's why the whole idea is to put up uh, uh, some capacity in uh, csy Uh, so that's broadly what the uh, o o overall uh, plan in capex is uh, sure and the cost i think if you are looking to go to 1457 atp earlier uh, so that uh, complete by uh, earlier we were looking at 1222 uh, now that completes by when 
Uh, so voice was not very clear, so I I missed what you asked. Oh. The uh, the erstwhile uh, caustic expansion where we were looking to have a caustic capacity to fourteen fifty seven ktpa. Yes. Uh, yes. That was expected by one q twenty two. Uh, now when do we expect that capacity? Yeah, sure, sure, thanks. So so the that capacity like uh, Jayant mentioned is likely to come in uh, second half. In the early second half, so there is. Uh, it was supposed to have come in quarter one, quarter two, but it has it's got delayed to second half because of COVID. Um, and and what you see out there in the chart uh, is additional 200 TPD, which I was so another 80, 73 kgpa, uh, which will take 24 months. We, on VSF uh, profitable, uh, like uh, uh, like the prices. Uh, I mean, based on our uh, channel checks and I mean industry interactions, like pricing uh, look very high, strong Q on Q. Uh, it sort of flowed to profit, but cost also seems to have increased uh, by 15 percent quarter on quarter. So has there been already impact of higher uh, pulp uh, during the quarter, or is there some other cost which has hit the quarter? No, so in BSF, there is no impact of uh, high raw material cost in this quarter. Uh, 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 only one sulfur. Sulfur yeah. price has gone up and coal price. Okay, sulfur and coal has gone up. Uh, and, my apologies. And, yeah. and pulse, uh, while the market has gone up by 30%, our consumption cost has gone up by 7%. Yeah. So the impact of the real impact of the raw material cost increase of due to pulp will come in only in uh, quarter two, perhaps. Quarter two, quarter two, end of quarter two, yeah. Yeah. And my last question on uh, the SOKTA's amalgamation. Uh, since when has been it has been amalgamated? Since how many, I mean, full FI 2021? Yeah, yeah. So what you see in the financial is the entire year's financials of SOKTA's is included in the financials of uh, textiles. Uh, so what you see is is hundred percent of softness. No, I mean it is for full FI twenty and twenty one. Or yes, for, that's right. Even the comparable figure, absolutely right. So I'll get back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naveen Sahedu from Ilvai. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Navi. Hello. Yeah, good evening, sir. And, uh, and congrats for good set of numbers. Uh, just one question, and sorry if it's a repeat, uh, uh, maybe due to bad audio, but what was the average pulp cost in Q4, and where are the prices currently? So, Q4, you want to know the yeah. market price? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, because I, I believe we are, like, you know, largely we are integrated. So if you could help us with our cost, as in what was our cost for Q4 our, and uh, even if we are integrated, we are arms length pricing. So we don't we don't have so we, we buy pulp from our subsidiaries on an arms length basis. It's a market driven okay. price. Yeah. Understood. So, so what was the price for average Q4? Q4 average pulp price yeah. of the China C C F what we is nine one nine one eight dollars per ton. Right and the spot price as a quarter ended at eleven hundred dollars per ton. Yeah. So if if I if I give you an indication, uh, so that's the pulp spot price. <coughs> Excuse me. In quarter four, our consumption rate, right, would be because we are getting advantage of the uh, earlier pulp prices and our uh, contracts, etc. Would be somewhere around fifty-four thousand per uh, per metric ton. That's it. The consumption price. Understood. But this will, as as the time goes, like we said, it will go up. Correct. So both from a pricing point of view, like you know, because there is some cool off that has happened to the VSF prices also. I mean, though your presentation says that March prices are thirteen percent, uh, March exit prices are thirteen percent higher over Q4. But thereafter, uh, clearly there is some uh, uh, easing of that has happened, if not more, at least 1,000 RMB. Uh, 
uh, uh, to the China uh, uh, prices and cost is also going up. So fair to assume that there can be a, a decent sort of a margin pressure in the coming one to two quarters, right? The other way to look at it is the Q4 was exceptional margin quarter. It was not a normal yeah. margin. So I'm, I'm, I, I see normally you see a, a good VSF business has a VSF to pulp delta of 0.9. And, and that delta went up to almost 1.3, 1.4 in Q4. So that was uh, an abnormal quarter. So I think what yeah, it is, is compared to is a healthy margin quarter. Not fair. I was just looking at slightly longer term in the sense this current quarter margins were at 24%. And, and historically, like, you know, uh, a peak has been even higher upwards of 35% and so. So, so just from a longer term, like, you know, perspective, given, let's say, China is acting up towards some of the environmental concerns, so slightly broader question. And, and this is more from the feedback that even in metals, we're seeing uh, uh, China acting towards these environmental uh, concerns and hence shutting some factories. So is there, is there anything that is happening on VSF front from a, a, a broader perspective, which can see that margins can or prices can see uh, up to, or this is what the range bound it is? There are two things in VSF what is happening. The biggest question mark is on the cotton. See, China makes cotton in Xinjiang region, which 85% of the China's cotton comes from there. And that cotton has been banned by the U.S. and European uh, brands because of the uh, uh, human rights violations and major sanctions are there. Now, if right. that happens, uh, it is happening already, and that's why there could be a run-up in the cotton prices. And the moment cotton prices go up, of course, that's the benefit. So the one of the big upside is what happens to the Indian cotton issue with the China. Because there is no way China can substitute the Indian production if they have to win the export market. If they don't do it, then the market gets vacated and people benefit because of that. So either way, it should help the business. That, that's the upside. Now, it's a way to see how it unfolds. We can't predict how it will unfold. A fair point. Right, right. Thank you. Thank because you. Cotton, Thank you. cotton prices have gone up despite the fact that people thought it might come down. So today, cotton prices are pretty high. Uh, both the cotton yarn prices as also the cotton and the export of cotton is going to happen in the big to China. So that's the... That's the okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pratik Kumar from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so thanks for the opportunity again. Uh, question on, uh, and given the very strong exit of... Uh, uh, caustic lower anchorage prices uh, for March quarter. So uh, our margins can be like sort of quite different in Q1, let's say in for 22, uh, or they should be like range bound here as well because of higher cost. Uh, uh, would, you, would you like to take? No, so I think, uh, you know, we, it's difficult to give us guidance for quarter one. Yeah. I mean, I generally, I mean, uh, we had a very strong uh, margins uh, in caustic segments also in FY19. And uh, like till FY20 also first half. Then it started to fall in line with industry, I guess. Uh, but uh, with now the improving prices, I'm not sure if they're sustainable. Uh, but... Uh, should we see margins of chemical segment improving going forward? Yeah, so um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take that, uh, Ashish. Yeah, at least go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, so um, I think the, the assumption very clearly, even in terms of our uh, aspiration for this year, has been that it should be at least equal or higher than the um, uh, previous year. Uh, and hence, we are expecting or we are hopeful of it. Two or three things which are concerning us. Number one, for in the first quarter, because of the, the second wave, um, we have some difficulty in certain segments for at least six weeks. The, the second concern we have is we were expecting certain projects to take off um, by uh, end of first quarter, second quarter, and then that's coming towards the later part of the year, the second half, as Ashish mentioned. So both will have a slight impact on uh, the overall year ahead. 
Uh, what we are banking on is um, what was unexpected last year was the V-shaped recovery. If really the markets recover as well as last year, um, it's not um, you know improbable to imagine that we would uh, at least partially recover this. But it is too early, as Ashish said. We can't really say it's going to be as good or better or uh, worse. We're taking one quarter at a time. This quarter, I think we want to just see how May goes and then June, how it recovers, and we'll take it from there. Thanks. Thank you. That's, that was only. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Dhanyawad uh, for it, for the opportunity. In continuation to, uh, as been remarked, sir, the, when the first wave uh, of COVID hit, it was, sir, uh, it was all, uh, all of a gl global phenomenon. But now, as we see that the international markets are uh, have opened up and the utilization levels there, uh, industry-wise, uh, are, are coming to their pre-COVID levels. So, in, in terms of uh, in terms of that scenario, sir, uh, uh, how well is this caustic market uh, sh shaping up? And sir, what kind of imports uh, have happened for the last year, and, uh, and uh, what should be the situation going forward this year, sir? So, let me take that, uh, Ashish. I think. Uh, Yes, you're right. At the end of the day, when you looked at Q4, uh, you had till the winter storm coming up a robust global demand on caustic, including India. And practically all of us grew and we did actually better than the Q4 of the preceding year on volume basis. Uh, at this point of time, uh, you think caustic demand is actually linked with chlorine demand. And chlorine demand is largely globally linked with the vinyl demand, which is doing very well. Whereas vinyl production or PVC production in India is not there, and that's why the impact is significant over here. Plus, it's a localized uh, wave two uh, that is impacting the situation currently. But even like last year, it took us about, you know, if we looked at it from uh, the removal of lockdowns to getting back to peak, it took about 60 days, and the entire industry was up and running in late 80s of capacity utilization. And that is what I think Ashish and Kalyan have been alluding to, that if the situation changes, it will change very fast because the inherent underlying demand uh, continues to be there. Uh, and uh, globally, we also expect uh, that the demand will be robust. As regarding imports, I think the, the entire supply chain globally was disrupted. So we did see a marginally about 10-15% less import uh, compared to last year. But that is also because the Q1 uh, literally was a washout for uh, the whole industry as the large capacities were not up and running. We expect the imports to continue at the same pace as they were last year in the, in the current scenario and uh, largely to the eastern and the western part of the country, uh, which is coming from your uh, Japan side or, Southeast, or Northeast Asia. So not too much expected on the import side. It will continue to be at the same pace as about three, three and a half lakh tons annually, which came in earlier, will come in now. And sir, on the anti-dumping part front, sir, uh, something was initiated earlier in a few months ago. So what is the update on that? So the update is, I think with the entire COVID situation, the investigation pace has slowed down. Uh, we've had a couple of meetings with the body, but... Uh, I think uh, the till the investigation is not over, we will not be able to comment. So taking the, these factors into account, uh, Mane, uh, the, the price trends in the caustic market uh, are going are, are, are likely to be subdued only because sir, if uh, if uh, if the if the recovery in other sec, uh, other chemical segment or other market have uh, not uh, led to recovery in caustic soda realization. What factors would uh, lead uh, to uh, recovery? Uh, money? I, I think so. It is still hovering around that three hundred dollar uh, band, something yeah. in, in that vicinity. Right. Yeah, right. It's hovering uh, in India at about a three hundred shade less than three hundred dollar band. As uh, band se nikalne ke liye, what what would be the factors that will reverse this downtrend in the uh, e ECU re uh, realization that is there for I think the last two three two and a, two years? Uh, if I'm not wrong. So. 
to your point, it's basically caustic is the basic chemical. So it goes into all the commodity applications. And at this point of time, you know, any capacity which comes in, it's like a step curve. When the prices are very high, a lot of capacity additions took place. Uh, we expect that lately the capacity utilization for the industry has gone up. And also the recent trends in the last quarter, Q4, we did say that the prices of caustic have moved up slowly. We expect that trend to continue. But it is again a function of big, larger clarity coming when this COVID wave 2 settles down and we start seeing the industries and the lockdowns opening up. So it's very difficult at this point of time to say anything on that front. More so, the, capa the current capacity in India uh, is about 20% higher than the current demand, 20-25% of the current demand. So it's a combination of uh, the lockdowns and the capacity, which is keeping the, uh, you know, the caustic price. I would not call it subdued. It's basically being at this point of time... Uh, you know, it's not being able to keep pace as like it used to keep pace in the past. Very small point. And we are also coming up with new capacities. Now, not only Grassim, other players also have somebody, someone has commissioned also. And people I have lined up fresh capacities, say, six months, one year, two years down the line, including you. So in that case, that, uh, 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 there has to be a demand push to, to keep up for these uh, expanded capacities going forward and plants running at... Uh, at, at, at higher 90s, otherwise the fixed cost and the variable cost metrics will also dampen down the uh, margins level. That assessment is correct, sir? No, I will not be able to comment upon what the others are doing. I think everybody understands and looks at the market situation, looks at their own customer base and capabilities, and then arrives that, uh, the, you know, and it's not that you can set up a caustic fee easily. It takes you about 24 to 36 months to put up a green fee. Uh, and about 24 months for a brown field. So all in all, we all believe that caustic has a great future, being a basic right. chemical, and that's what is what is moving this industry forward. If you look at from our consumption scenario or our demand supply, we're just about not even yet at a 5 million ton capacity. But the good part what is happening is, is the chlorine story, which is improving quarter on quarter, and that is what is also now you know, balancing the echo, which was earlier mostly scored towards caustic, towards caustic and chlorine as of now. So I think there is there is potential in this business to grow further. Uh, and that's what is being read by the entire industry, including us. Right. And for the chlorine derivative part, my concluding remark, for the chlorine derivative part, of what percentage of our uh, chlorine goes to the down, uh, downstream and how much is the uh, market sale? So as, uh, Ashish, uh, as yeah. Ashish put it, I think he gave a figure. There are two parts we look at chlorine. One is the entire VAP story, which by 2025, we will be at 40%. And then there is a pipeline by which goes to industries along with us or our ancillaries or what we would call it. If I would take it by 2025, we will be somewhere around 65 ish or percent, 65%, which will be consumed by this particular mode. And the balance will go to the market. Yeah. Right. So, so, so for just to repeat, forty percent VAP, another twenty-five would be pipeline, and the balance uh, would be much in the same. That that is for two zero two five, sir. I'm uh, asking for currently. I'm asking for currently. Yeah. So currently, about twenty-seven percent is uh, VAP. Twenty-seven plus pipeline plus pipeline takes you to about forty percent, and the balance forty forty-five percent, fifty fifty-five goes to the market as uh, things. Right. And so one of your competitors are developing a product, Hydrogen Hydrate. Uh, they are com coming up with a capacity and uh, as per their presentation and all, uh, uh, they will be the only player in the country. So have we looked into this pro pro product uh, also uh, and the demand scenario? Mane, well, what are the metrics? Like we've been saying quite earlier, because of competitive reasons, we don't want to get into a discussion what we are analyzing and study. But let me assure you on one thread, there are multiple products that we are analyzing, studying, and looking at. And at the appropriate time when we reach the comfort level is when we will get into announcements. Yes. So just to just to Mr. add a couple of points. I'm so sorry to interrupt. May I please sir request is only answering, to Yes, sir, ma'am. Sir, sir is only answering me. I'm, I have concluded. Just please allow sir to conclude. Yes, sir. Please conclude. 
I said what I had to say. Sir, you are being bold, right? Because it was interrupted. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. so uh, I can I can add one last point. I think. Please, please. Um, first of all, globally, there are no new chloralkali investments. They are just getting relocated. You might have heard there has been closures in U.S. and elsewhere. Each of the players and in different countries are making choices. So there is a huge amount of relocation going on from west to east. So globally, as the demand is going up globally, the new investments are not actually coming globally. They are only getting relocated. India is actually seeing a growth. Second, I think we don't invest. on a next two year basis we invest it based on next 30 years basis and we see uh, as jen said a very very strong growth option there and uh, we'll continue that and and the last one is we will fundamentally see unlike in the last 10 years we will fundamentally see chlorine being uh, uh, making a lot more um, uh, leading uh, product compared to caustic in future just like uh, what happens globally we will see more of that and more of chlorine derivatives and chlorine pricing which is going to determine the the equal levels in future than before so uh, we we have seen uh, all types of products again when we look at derivatives we look at derivatives where how much of chlorine intensity is going into these products uh, as jen said i think we are doing a lot of calculation but our scale is very large unlike other competitors so when we look at it we will we will have a much uh, uh, more focused conversations on selective chlorine derivatives than all of them thanks thank you sir thank you for uh, all the answer and all the best sir and stay safe sir. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of amit murarka from motilal oswal please go ahead hi good evening your most of the questions have been answered just had one uh, quick question on on the timeline of the fertilizer uh, business realization so i believe uh, you had guided for one year uh, completion so that comes to around september to december so are you still confident of being able to receive the funds by then and uh, and the second question to that is uh, is it fair to say that uh, the cases for the paints will only start after the realization of the funds from the fertilizer sale uh so the first question uh, you 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 got it absolutely right so i think by september we'll be able to complete the uh process and uh, receive the funds uh on the second bit to uh, paints is irrespective of uh, fertilizer so uh, it's not that we will start uh, so we will right now the first dollars of paints will go into uh Uh, acquiring land, so which is already we are actively looking at, and we have uh, started deploying that. And of course, I'm not talking about employee expenses and also that are already started. From the capex point of view, land will be the first one which we've already started doing. Uh, okay, sure, that's all I have. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhavan Chera from Inam Holding. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, so, what was the VFY top line and the EBITDA? If I missed out from the presentation. Yeah. So I. Number. Yeah. No. No. I had mentioned it in my speech. It is four sixty five crore of revenue and seventy seven crore of uh, EBITDA. Seventy seven crore of EBITDA. Okay. Uh, and the other thing, I think the voice was not clear. I missed out uh, the because of the quarter one lockdown. Uh, how are your factories operating currently, both uh, chemical and VSF, uh, and what would be the utilization level at both in the quarter one or current one? I take on the VSF. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah, So I think VSF. All our factories are right now running. Uh, full capacity, except uh, 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 Hari Har, because normally every year we take an annual shutdown for the pulp plant. It was supposed to be taken in the first week of June, so that we advanced to this month of May. So I think this is a good time to finish off all the shutdown, so that when the demand comes back, we have we have full capacity available to us. That's the only the only thing we have done so far. Let's see how the how the lockdown continues, and then we'll review the June once again. One more thing we have done is like. Last year we did. As the lockdown happens, we focus more on exports. So there are a lot of exports we are doing from 
from the from the Indian market right now, so that our plants will be fully utilized. So export of fiber, as well as we have converted one line to non-woven in Kharach, and maybe one more line will convert. So we we'll start making again non-woven in Kharach, which will be exported to Europe and US market till the time the India normalizes. That's why we are making sure that the plants are utilized fully. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Jamodia from Anvil Research. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity again, sir. So, continuing with the earlier question, so like you mentioned that uh, we are going for more of the exports of uh, the specialty VSF. What you mentioned about non-woven. So, sir, it is safe to assume that uh, we are selling more of modal and excel in the domestic market, and dop dyed and uh, other uh, value-added products are exported. So, the mix looks like. more of modal and excel is sold here domestically so the realizations are higher in the domestic market as compared to that of uh, the export market for the specialty we are sector uh, you are right so you see modal is sold in domestic market and exported both okay so about about, uh, about uh, 30 to 40% is sold in local market and balance are export okay lyocell lyocell again is sold in domestic market and export but 30% domestic 70% export okay and the domestic is at slightly better price because of the uh, the trade advantage of what we have okay so one the good thing what happened in non woven is non woven go get into quarterly contract okay so we have been able to sign high very high price contracts because we negotiated them in the last quarter okay so that is a good advantage so i think uh, the non woven woven exports are going to be much better value than one would normally expect okay so, okay uh, and uh, yeah And sir, if you can, uh, uh, because and, yes, sir, yeah, continue. One point I would like to inform: uh, uh, we used to make our Leva Eco, which I told you, the Eco variant of our our our, our viscose fiber. We have now started manufacturing in Indian Vilayat. Okay. The new project that has just got commissioned. Okay. And we did big export from from Jaipur going forward because Leva Eco is huge demand by the global brand. Which we started product about a year and a half back, and we have almost. Uh, Go manifold. Very high okay. area, so that will start from that now. Okay, okay. And sir, in the presentation, you have given the exit prices for China VSF as well as the starting prices also. But if you can tell us about our realizations for the grey VSF, some sense, some idea about how we have been. Uh, so our realization for Q4. Yes, sir. For Q4, for grey, sir. Yeah, so our uh, you see the problem. Our uh, relation has been broadly in line with the China, slightly plus minus. The issue is, you see, as I told you, China is an indicative price. Correct. Our correct. Our condition in the Indian market is governed by the local condition because what correct. happens, like the, how the value chain is doing. Now, what because the the, the build up in the Indian market was slow. Correct. The Indian retail started opening in January, February, March. It went up full full capacity. So our our price also went up gradually. Correct. So March my price was about uh, almost like international price. Okay, okay. So the full catch up happened in the month of March. Correct. That's right. That's right. That's right. Correct. Sir, so in the last. We don't. We don't. Initially, price the product just because the China is selling at some price because my value chain has to be able to afford it. Absolutely, absolutely. And sir, so the last and final thing is on the epoxy. So, sir, if you can give some sense of. the percentage growth in our absolute ebitda on a yoy basis so let's say as compared to last year last q4 of fy 2020 20 and this q4 of fy 21 how in what percentage terms of our ebitda has grown for the epoxy so epoxy would be almost uh, uh, a big growth actually if you if you look at q of q for example okay yeah QOQ would be almost to close to twice. Okay, so it's almost yeah. double. So yeah, so um, and 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 you know Q4 of last year was quite depressed because that was a quarter when you when you lost one uh, whole month quarter, almost one one week sorry uh, of this one. So okay. you could assume that one and a half times. Compared to quarter three, one and a half to two times roughly, uh, but much more than in comparison to Q4 of last year. Got it. Got it. Thanks a lot, sir, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
That was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Adukia, CFO, for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Uh, see, I, I think uh, we are all going through difficult times personally. So I, I hope everything is uh, safe at uh, your end. Uh, and and please take care of yourself. Stay safe. Uh, and and of course we will connect again in the next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Grassam Industries, it concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining. You may now disconnect your lines.